the M25 is the busiest motorway in Britain. Oh, that is epic. Stretching 117 miles around our capital city, it's used for 73 million journeys a year. No, no, you don't stop on a motorway for that. Twice as many as it was designed for. Go travel on the M25 unless you absolutely have to. Keeping it moving is a hidden army of traffic controllers, patrol officers, engineers and maintenance workers. It's closed! Who work tirelessly around the clock to keep us safe. What vehicle are you in? But capacity is pushed to the max. And every hold-up costs the economy thousands of pounds. Hey, hey, hey. Making the job of those that work on it a race against time. It could be something quite serious at this time. Love it or hate it, one thing's for sure, after this, you'll never look at the M25 the same way again. It's a victim of its own success, quite frankly. There's the road to hell. It's morning, An M25 control room operator, Tom, is starting his drive to work and just like a quarter of a million of us, he's taking the M25. The trouble with this job is if you phone up and say I'm stuck in traffic, they check straight away. Freight carried on Britain's roads is worth up to 11 billion pounds a year to Britain's economy. And it falls to a dedicated team of controllers to keep the M25 moving. Yeah, got that one. Yeah, still ongoing. It's a stressful job, but for Emily, there is one thing that ensures a good shift. A decent cup of tea. Oh, Chris, what have you done? <laughs> I've done my manatee. It's, it's meant to be a man. It's a manatee. It's a tea infuser. And sometimes I just have it like, hooked over the side of my teacup. This is a little friend. Hello, how is England? Yeah, what have you got? The explosion in online shopping has led to a 51% increase of vans and lorries on our motorways. And with 40% of accidents on the M25 involving a lorry, it's put a massive strain on the relationship between car and truck driver. And what is worse, is it car or lorry drivers? I think it's quite difficult to choose. The thing that really surprises me now is the sheer amount of trucks. They're just in all lanes, and there's loads of them. I think a lot of the motorists on the motorways, uh, they're in their own little world. Look at that, look. Straight across. Lorry that just came across. Everyone shoved on their brakes. Oh, nice, see that? Articulated lorry, change lanes here, no indication, straight in front of another car. See the car in front. That's the sort of gap we need to stop when we're fully loaded. That gap isn't for you to duck into because you've left it too late to get off. I think people don't seem to respect what an LGV does and the, and the mass of it. Lorry drivers, they are professionals, but they can get it wrong. And when they do, it's 44 tonnes of getting it wrong. Um, and that can be quite catastrophic. And when it comes to collisions between lorries and cars, there are no prizes for who comes off worse. At Junction 22, there has been a collision between a lorry and a car. Yeah, Brian, go ahead. Just prior to 16, we've got a car sideways on and an LGV in lane three. Imagine it's a very, very scary experience. Most of the time, they result in an injury, but unfortunately, sometimes they result in an injury, and I know that at least one that somebody's died. Right, I've got lane one and lane two at the minute. In order to recover the vehicles from the fast lane and safely treat any injuries, traffic officers Ray and Brian need to shut the motorway with a rolling roadblock. You ready? Yeah. Arrivals on, don't pass this blade. Got lane three, look, got lane four coming up. The traffic is brought to a halt by zigzagging across the motorway. Can you stay back? And I'll go and see what the extent is, right? Now Brian can get the facts. What vehicle are you in, sir? OK, are you injured, sir? I'm all right. You all right? What's this, the lorry driver? Right. Hello, mate, are you injured? No, I'm You're not sure. injured? Yeah, sure. You better drive your vehicle. A lorry's blind spot can be nearly half its length, 
almost double that of an average family saloon car, making collisions like this all too common. This lorry versus car is non-injury so far. The black car was sitting in the lorry's blind spot. As the truck changed lanes, it sideswiped the vehicle, spinning it into the central reservation. Car drivers don't respect the blind spot of a lorry, so they'll hover around, and then when the lorry changes lane, they get spun around by the, um, the lorry. Uh, we do get a lot of those. That's probably the most common acts that we have. The most I've had is eight in a shift across the region. OK, go through, and then I'll see you on the old shoulder. Just stay there now. Just stay there. OK, now, can you drive your vehicle, or do you want me to do it, sir? OK. Doing what traffic officers do best, Brian has the road cleared in a matter of minutes and Ray is able to release the traffic. Hotel Alpha from Sirico 52. But the lorry driver is clearly in shock. You know, you get the classic, everyone's coming down the inside here. Um, and with a HGV, you just don't see nothing. One minute I'm fine, next minute. I hear a crumple and then there's a car in front of me. 20 years of driving. Never had an RTA. Absolutely got it. The car driver has had a lucky escape. Now I feel alright because she got over there, but I'm alright now because I thought I was going to roll, so. Fishing. We're still having a bit of luck. But before they can release the truck driver, they need to be sure he is okay to drive. Well, at least he didn't panic. If he just brakes and it still had that side momentum, there is a possibility that it could roll. So just slowing down is the, the best thing, but obviously these things don't slow down really quick. They, they'll take a good 100, 200 metres just to slow down, even with a car in front. Yeah. So I thought you held it, held it together well. He's still way better than I have. Yeah, he's got fishing to look forward to. Nice and calm and relaxing. You can chill out to that. Don't beat yourself up over it. No, it's an accident, isn't it? You can't do. You can't change what's happened. But nobody's injured. Yeah. Right? Nice uh, hot tea with uh, a couple of spoons of sugar in it, I think. Yeah? Yeah. All right. All right, nice one. You take care, mate. Bye, Michael. None injury, which is really good news. A few panels are bent, but that's what insurance is for. But yeah, I'd say that drivers were both very lucky. Patrolling the northern section of the M25 are traffic officer Simon and team manager Kevin. So do you reckon you'll be able to do that? The lorry drivers sleep in trucks, long hours, popping them out away of a snooze? No, it's, it's never really appealed to me, long distance lorry driving. You like, you like the comfort of your bed, don't you? That's it. <laughs> How would you decorate your truck if you had one, though? There'd be mirrors on the ceiling. ceiling. <laughs> 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 a bit like your bedroom, then. Sirica 5-2, Sirica 5-2. Oh, we've got a lorry here. At Junction 25, Kevin and Simon have spotted a lorry parked in a dangerous position on the side of the motorway. Right, right, can't see what's wrong with him. Strange as it might seem, you are nearly three times more likely oh, to be involved in an accident on the side of the motorway than you are on the carriageway. Hello, have you broken down? No, I speak English. No, I speak English. Why have you stopped? The yeah, Agram. No, 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 you don't stop on the motorway for that. You can't stop here for that. This is for emergency. That's not emergency. Yeah, sure, stop, please. With a Romanian lorry changing his tachograph over. Yeah, 5 1, that's all received. It's a lorry having a taco break. Taco break meaning they've passed their hours, not taco like the food. A taco or tachograph is the recording of a truck's driving time, speed and distance. They're used to make sure drivers don't exceed the limits of driving nine hours a day. No, no, no taco. You can shrug your shoulders all you like. You need to go, please. Now. Rear 
Really? Go. I'm actually getting quite hungry now, speaking about tacos. <laughs> When I'm speaking to a lorry driver, then they don't speak much, much, in, uh, sorry, much English. Like yourself. Yeah, but like me, really. Sort of. <laughs> then it, it makes life a bit challenging. <laughs> and there's another challenge waiting for them just five minutes down the road. Kevin is going to have to dust off his language skills once again. I can feel another taco break. Hello. No, no, stop here, no. Not a motorway. You can't stop here. Okay, now. Thank you. And look at this rubbish they leave there. They have the taco break. That bottle there is full of And this is where people who genuinely break down have to stop. It's not on. It's a worry. It really is a worry. Watch where you're putting your feet. <laughs> Cars account for 79% of all vehicles on Britain's roads. Lorries only make up 5%, but over half of all their driving is on motorways, and much of that time is on the M25. Nearly all our freight in the country goes round on lorries. Everything you eat and drink has probably been on a lorry. The food that you eat, the bricks your house is made of. If you bought a new car, that probably was delivered in the back of a car transporter. Everybody needs lorries, love them or hate them. Not only do they bring us everything we need, they also have an interesting view on the world. Oh, you'd be surprised at what you can see from being sat up at this height. <laughs> Usually, I get some lorry driver come along and he's like, you forgot to finish your hair off. Quite often you can see women driving to work with, with their skirts hanging in the back window because like, they don't want to get them creased. <laughs> They're just driving along in their underwear. Good thing I've got, like, I'm covered up down there because he could see my couldn't he? It's lunchtime, and in Dartford, traffic officers Dan and Dawn are getting hungry. Right, what have, you done, what have you got for dinner today? Have you brought anything in? I've got stuff with me, but obviously to keep you happy, whatever you want, really. What do you fancy? Burgers? Kebab? I've got some rice with me. No, I have. With what in it? Yucky, healthy stuff? Yucky, healthy stuff. Yeah. I don't like it. It even smells when you open the box, it's like this. <laughs> oh, cheers. So what you're telling me, I'll just stink you out every time yeah. I open mine, as you sit there with your large kebab. Chili Mouse 7-2, go ahead. At Junction 29, Dan and Dawn have spotted something unusual. We've got behind us, um, just seen this, just a guy walking along on the hard shoulder with a pair of tracksuit buttons and a vest. Go We're just going to reverse up to him now. Oh, uh, we've just uh, had to stop our shoulder. Oh, uh, we've got pedestrian on the network. 50 people were killed or seriously injured in accidents on the hard shoulder last year, making it a very unsafe place to be. And this particular pedestrian has come a long way. Where have you come from? From where? Eritrea. Eritrea. OK, just wait there, OK? She can't walk here. One second. I'll just sit there then, mate. So Sierra Lima 72 have come across a pedestrian on the motorway. They think he's potentially an illegal entry into the UK. We're going to be contacting the police because it is a crime and it is something that they would need to deal with. Was you in the lorry? Big truck, yeah? They try and stow themselves in the back if they can, or even go to the extent of holding on to the axles of the vehicle. Where was he going to? I don't know. Don't know? Just walking? Uh, just walking, yeah. Easy. It's estimated that around 50 illegal immigrants hiding in lorries enter the UK through the ports on the south coast every week. And with many heading for the capital, finding young migrants on the side of the M25 is a growing problem. There was a point last summer where we were seeing so many, we thought we were going to have to put a footpath on the M25. We were just police were taking them off all day long. The police arrived to assess the situation. Well, officers. What he said to me was he was in a, a big car, a truck. It was him and two other people he weren't friends with. When he stopped, he jumped out and left them two in there. At the moment, 
It's believed that you've come into the UK illegally. You're going to be arrested yeah, for any entry to the UK. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're also having a sort of that shower. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's okay. what he said. Come see an alcohol. Shower and asleep. Can't we take the police station? Hang on. See you later, mate. Take care. Thanks, see you later. Guys. Cheers. Thanks for officers. As soon as they come through, they've paid their money to whoever they've paid their money to. They've just dropped them off straight away at their convenience, the truck driver's convenience. I feel sorry that he's got nobody with him. He's got no family around. I don't know. I feel sad for, sad for that. Last year, commercial vehicles clocked up 64 billion miles on British roads, so it's just as well someone is keeping an eye on them. Hello, driver. How you doing, sir? Just a quick inspection, sir. They're called the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency, otherwise known as the DVSA. Basically, the DVSA are the, the lorry police. Seven two, go ahead. Today, near Junction 14, the team are doing surprise inspections for dodgy looking trucks and truck drivers. Yeah. Every year, the DVSA remove around 7,000 unroadworthy commercial vehicles from the road. Pull something a little bit naughty over. Traffic stopper Ian is tasked with spotting potentially dangerous vehicles. You know, you can see things like abnormal loads or insecure loads, curtains bulging. Um, general conditions of the vehicle we'd be looking for. Ian has spotted something he doesn't like the look of. I've seen a vehicle up here that I'm not happy with the load because it's got a full skip on top of a full skip, which could possibly be a security issue. Ian has led the overloaded skip lorry to a location where the DVSA team will check the driver's documents as well as the vehicle. I'm now just going to go and check your driver's hours, make sure everything's all good. Richard over here is, will do your vehicle maintenance. Last year, a third of vehicles checked by the DVSA were found to have mechanical problems. But it's not engine faults that is worrying vehicle inspector Richard. Because he's got a loaded skip, it could um, fall off the side of the vehicle. It's life dangerous, really. This is your fixed penalty for the insecure load. Yeah. Right. Get 28 days to pay. Mm -hmm. Right, I'll meet you outside, OK? The lorry needs to fix its dangerous load, and this driver has an interesting way of doing it. I'm not familiar with the way you load and unload this vehicle, so whether that's best practice, I wouldn't like to say. I'm probably going to say no, but... Now the dangerously stacked skips are unloaded, the driver is free to go. Probably about a tonne of aluminium in this. Value, probably about six, seven hundred pound a tonne, something like it. That's why I'm not leaving it here. Because <laughs> it might grow legs. There are 64 experienced traffic officers working around the M25 every day. But they all had to start somewhere. And over in Dartford, traffic officer Andy is still learning the ropes. Oh, yeah, I suppose you'd call me a rookie of the team. Uh, finding my feet still, trying to get my confidence up on the on-road bits and pieces. Just had a job coming. We got a report of a vehicle uh, on the hard shoulder at a 90 degree angle. Sierra Lima 72, Sierra Lima 72, Hotel Alpha. At junction 29, a lorry has shunted a car in fast-moving traffic, spinning it into the hard shoulder. Truck and car collisions can be some of the worst accidents on the M25, with a high chance of serious injuries. For a rookie like Andy, this could be a challenge. Hopefully nobody's injured, but we'll be there to help get these vehicles righted, find out what's taken place. When Andy and Mick arrive, the paramedic is treating the injured car driver. But Andy is still keen to find out the facts. It sounds like we've got injuries. Thankfully, the car driver only has minor cuts and bruises, but is clearly shaken up by the collision with the truck. I saw him coming in on my mirrors. Um, next to me, I know he claimed me, and then I was spinning around and went straight into the wall, and he didn't see me from being up the, the height he was. And I'm still sort of stinging where there's cuts, but I'm just grateful, you know, that it could have been a lot worse. A car possibly weighs two tons and that lorry probably weighs 44 tons. So 
I would think it's truly terrifying. It appears to be an open and shut case, but Emily has sympathies on both sides. I think cars cause more accidents than lorries um, because lorry drivers are professionals. Um, they've got a job to do, they've got a load to drop off or collect. Car drivers tend to be people who are keen to get home or keen to get to work and are going too fast. But working on the side of a fast-moving motorway, Andy has just one thing on his mind. Hopefully in the next few minutes we'll get this cleared and everybody can be on their way safely. In the future, traffic on the M25 is only going to increase and much of it will be in the form of trucks. So as car and lorry drivers on the motorways, we all need to be more aware of our surroundings. But if we do have any problems, the Highways England teams will always be there to keep us safe. Did they hide your tea bags? Yeah, people steal them. I don't hide the tea bags, so they get hidden. This is good, good kebab. See, always eat healthy. Always eat healthy. Next time. This is fun. The weather goes down a storm on the motorway. We've got another one. Just about to see the lorry in front. We have a rather spectacular lake. Dangerous. So I drove through the line of cones straight up where the traffic officers were. Oh, it's frightening.